Hey there folks, I'm Mark, in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse, and this, it's Billboard Breakdown. I don't remember. So full disclosure, I don't predict much that happened this week to last until next week, because we could very well get a double album bomb coming from both Big Sean and... 6 9 Now granted, how much either will truly resonate across the Hot 100 is a bit sketchy at this time. Most because the SoundCloud waifu has seen his sales projections plummet, and I don't know if this Big Sean album has enough buzz as a whole to blow through, maybe even break into the top 40, but I would not be surprised if it happened. Look, my point is that I don't know how much this week is gonna matter... Well, except the top 10, where to my astonishment, Dynamite by BTS actually got a second week at number one. And I place almost all this on sales still being enormous, plus the radio actually being kind of decent. The streaming dropped off significantly, and if there's a vulnerability for this song being overtaken, it's probably there. And it's likely going to come from WAP by Cardi B featuring Megan Thee Stallion at number two. With just obscene streaming and YouTube numbers and good sales and a radio run. Frankly, I'm a little bit shocked it didn't go back to number one, but I guess BTS just won out in the sales margin. Now, the discounting of that song probably helped, but that's a different topic. Now, the majority of the top ten didn't really move at all this week. Laugh Now, Cry Later by Drake featuring Lil Durk. It's at number three because streaming and radio made up for the sales crashing. Rockstar by DaBaby and Roddy Rich is at number four because while it has some radio inertia and slightly better sales, it now really is on the way out. And it's pretty much the same story for Blinding Lights by The Weeknd at number 5, except slightly better airplay overall, and little else. Then we got Watermelon Sugar by Harry Styles actually rising up to number 6 on one last radio push. I mean, the sales and the streaming, they have tanked, that's pretty much all it's got left. But What's Poppin' by Jack Harlow and crew might even be worse off at number 7 because all it has is slipping streaming and the radio has clearly peaked. But now we actually got some good news. Entering the top 10 and hopefully staying for a little while, Mood by 24K Golden featuring Ian Dior is at number 8. And it looks like it's going to be a strong hit. The sales on YouTube, they're not huge right now, but the streaming is absolutely massive and the radio run has picked up some big momentum. If the timing is played right, I can see this going into the top 5 at least. It's probably the most I've been excited about a trap song in a long time, so yeah, I really hope it does. Now the last two, uh, Savage Love by Josh685 and Jason Derulo stuck at number 9 as the sales losses are compensated by the radio run. And Before You Go by Louis Capaldi is at number 10 for basically a lot of the same reasons. Good radio, but fairly worse sales. But when you look outside of all this... Again, with our losers and our dropouts this week, it's a little bit tough to predict what's going to happen given what's coming. The only major dropout is The Box by Roddy Rich finally finishing a shockingly strong run, and our losers are kind of scattered here. Also on the way out, we got Savage by Megan Thee Stallion and Beyonce at 30, and Deathbed by Paufu and Bia Badoobie at 36. And you know what? We're all seeing some continued losses for Seven Summers by Morgan Wallen at 56. That is dropping off fast. There was little to no momentum behind this. Uh, Why We Drink by Justin Moore is at 76. Done by Chris Jansen living up to the title at 94. And Girl of My Dreams by Rod Wave at 100. Then we had the return of Need It by Migos featuring Young Boy Never Broke Again falling back to 88. And the gains for I Called Mama by Tim McGraw. And I Love My Country by Florida Georgia Line evaporating at 82 and 62 respectively. Not a good week for country here, I gotta say. Finally... Again, it's basically unsupported, so My Future by Billie Eilish went down to 78. Wow, this might just become a throwaway and not a leadoff single, which is interesting and telling in its own way. We're going to have to see how Billie Eilish and her team will move after this kind of flops. Now, we had no returns this week, but we did actually get a couple of gains, although I'm not really seeing any trend with any of them. Tap In by Saweetie is continuing its radio run up to 21. One of Them Girls by Lee Bryce has some big Nashville radio behind it to 33. Rain On Me by Lady Gaga and Ariana Grande got the VMAs boost to 34. Lemonade by Internet Money, Gunna, Don Tolliver, and Knob saw some streaming traction at 54. Hawaii by Maluma got a boost off the debut to 
60. My Ex's Best Friend by Machine Gun Kelly and Black Bear saw a similar spike off the return to 68. And IOI by Surf Mesa and Emily is up to 70 because the radio needs filler. I mean, that's all I got with that one. I'm still a little bit shocked it stuck around. But okay, we got a pretty manageable list of our new arrivals here. So, all right, let's get things started with number 99, Ain't Always the Cowboy by John Party. Ain't got no settle down in their boots. Gone just what they do. Oh look, for his late album single, John Party finally picks one of the best songs on his 2019 album. How about that? It's heavily rooted in fiddle and pedal steel, it's got some organic presence, and even if I feel like the bass line is a little bit neglected in favor of the slightly scuzzier guitars, and John Party's vocals still aren't all that stellar, as I think his flat nasal timbre can start to get a bit grating on the hook, these are a lot of the tones I like hearing in mainstream country. And the content's actually pretty good too. It's a breakup psalm, but one where John Party is actually okay with her moving on. He's made peace with it, they're splitting probably for the right reasons, and I think he just appreciates just bucking the stereotype of the heartbreaker cowboy that's always the one to leave her behind. In other words, yeah, you know what? I like this when I covered the album. It's just a really damn solid song. Great stuff. Happy it's finally a single. Check it out. Number 90, Let's Link by Hu Heen. Come on, let's link. Can't do what I do. I can beat it up with no hands. Teach you like you monarchy. We can slide out, touch bands. Oh look, another week, another forgettable slice of trap that's being boosted by TikTok. But you know what, by the standards of songs pushed by that platform, this might be one of the worst in recent memory. For one, it is an overmixed mess. Some nursery rhyme keyboard chords smothered out by the snaps, the record scratches, the gang vocals, and then a bassy trap beat too. But you know what, this might have worked if Uhim wasn't a pretty bad rapper. He can barely stay on beat, and his stop-start delivery doesn't flatter how exaggerated he's trying to play himself up to be. He's trying to use a lot of personality to overcompensate for not being in any sort of pocket here, and when you realize he's spending the entire song trying to convince a girl to leave her boyfriend in explicit detail, because apparently she's such a bad bitch already, so why exactly would she get with you, especially when you don't really display any attractive qualities? Uh, yeah, this is not good. Thankfully, once TikTok gets bored of this, we'll be able to move on. I don't expect it's gonna stick around for long. Just saying. Number 83, Expensive by Ty Dolla Sign featuring Nicki Minaj. So is Ty Dolla Sign actually gonna release this dream house project or drip feed singles of big name guest stars and keep pushing it back when the singles don't manage to catch fire? I mean, I'm not even the biggest Ty Dolla Sign fan fan, and even I'm a little bit shocked on how sporadic his momentum seems to be. Not helped by how he doesn't really seem to capitalize on it in the best moments, but alright, hey, he got the Nicki Minaj stimulus package for this song, and am I the only one who thinks that this sounds like a little bit like a mustard riff in its groove? I mean, you swap out the synths for some of the guitars that they will pitch shift around here, and it is surprisingly close, albeit with a few more trap skitters woven in, and I don't really think it's a bad thing for the record. The production really is about as opulent and expensive sounding as it needs to be here. I think the production's pretty good. And you know what, for the eight bars she provides, Nicki Minaj is fine here. It's empty brand name flexing, but Nicki can at least sell that in that lane. She sounds imperious enough. Hell, I think my biggest problem might come with Ty Dolla Sign himself. The song doesn't really let him cut loose. It's way too tight in its groove for that. And given that we only got two verses, it feels weirdly short and a bit undercooked especially given all the empty content. I don't know, it's fine, but I don't think this is a single that moves the needle. At least for him, and at least for me. Number 79, Blast Off by Internet Money featuring Juice World and Trippy Red. Fuck with the gang and it be a tragedy. Fuck with my shooters, they in the back with me. Okay, am I the only one who's starting to get a little sick of every scrap of Juice World's verses and material being tacked onto otherwise forgettable collaborations for the hit on the Hot 100? I mean, if you're looking at a trend all damn year, it's been one of the more egregious ones especially when this song's been teased going as far back as 2018. And let's make this clear, Juice World is about the only thing that makes this close to tolerable, and it's not one of his better verses. It's 
slapdash, the rhyme scheme is clunky, and all the vocal leads sound weirdly compressed against the weedy guitar loop and the trap skitter that's beyond generic at this point. But the problem is Trippy Red, and while I've been on the record saying that I've not really bought at all into his appeal, some of the lyrics here are just awful. Do everything I say like your majesty. Trying to get in that pussy baby that's mac and cheese. Fuck that bitch and then dip. I got them chips to receive. Again, I have to ask, what woman wants this? Because it's not like Trippy Red is an impressive singer or vocalist on this thing, or even as a rapper, because outside of those lines is the same bland melodrama and gunplay we've been hearing from him for years now. In other words, it sucks, and I've stopped caring about this guy. Next, number 57, Starting Over by Chris Stapleton. So, it looks like we're getting a new Chris Stapleton album coming soon, hopefully this year, with this as the lead-off single produced by Dave Cobb and his wife on the backing vocals. And honestly, I'm more surprised that it debuted this high, but I guess if Chris now has that mainstream traction, I'm not about to complain. And you know what, this song really is pretty damn nice. A little jauntier than what we normally get from Chris Stapleton with the prominent and slightly faster acoustic line, and some very subtle touches of organ that are sliding around the back of the mix, but what I like is that the song doesn't feel as bone dry and brittle as a lot of the From A Room albums actually sounded, especially in the guitar. It's a little warmer, Dave Cobb actually mic'd the bass well for once, and Chris Stapleton doesn't need to howl to give the song his unique presence, mostly coming through in his writing. And you know what, I like the element of forgiveness that comes through here too. It's a long and difficult road to pull oneself out of stasis, but if you want to roll the dice and try again, he is open to it, and the song has enough understated quiet hope to really stick the landing and come across as pretty damn charming. And yeah, we're easily two for two when it comes to country this week, because while I think Chris Stapleton has a couple better songs, this is still really nice. It's still great by every other standard. I'm excited for the album. In the meantime, yeah, you know what? Check this out. Good stuff. Next up, number 38, Over Now by Calvin Harris and The Weeknd. This makes both more and less sense than you would think. For one, Calvin Harris has been experimenting a bit more outside of flashy EDM, and that is territory The Weeknd has dabbled in. But on the other hand, I see The Weeknd on collaborations recently, and while Blinding Lights is still cleaning up in the top five, he could push other singles from the album. Even if he's not going to push Faith, which is the one great song he hasn't made a single, there still is quality there. But okay, this collaboration... Well, Calvin Harris is certainly getting back off the advances he was making on Funk Wave Bounces Volume 1, this time with some sharp-edged 80s funk with the glassy synths, the sharp bass, the weedy guitar rollick, and the super tight percussion line. And you know what, I do think The Weeknd sounds pretty comfortable here. But at the same time, if like me, you appreciate The Weeknd on songs that feel huge and cinematic, this is considerably more low-key retro and restrained. Which, sure, makes sense for a breakup song where it's clear that neither of them were good for each other, we got two of those songs this week, and they need to move on and stop abusing themselves, but this feels more like a coda to a more interesting and dramatic story, and as such, I'm a little bit cooler on it. Uh, it's a good enough song where the two of them will meet in the middle, or really the weekend just getting some sort of consistency out of Calvin Harris, but I will say this, it's good, but both can do better. And finally, number 13, Ice Cream by Blackpink and Selena Gomez. With the kiss, so he me ice cream. Catch me in the fridge right where the ice be. And again, I feel like this makes more sense than you would think. Let's be honest, how many of you are still going back to what Selena Gomez put out in January? And more importantly, doesn't January feel like half a lifetime ago? So you know what, I get it. I understand if she wants to get her name on a big new single and help enable Blackpink's continued efforts to stab over and cross over in the United States, it makes sense. What I didn't mention is that this song is a headache and a half, co-written by Ariana Grande and Victoria 
Victoria Monet, which leaves me thinking that either of those two might have been better off selling this themselves than Blackpink or Selena Gomez, the latter of whom, let's be real, does not need to be here and is really is outshone in terms of vocal talent by the girl group in pretty much every way. But even then, Blackpink does not have a vocal talent with the range or vocal texture of Ariana Grande, but this song has moments where they're going to try to reach those higher notes where you kind of need Ariana's register and it really comes across like they're forcing it, which is pretty much the vibe I get on the entire song. The airless squonking passing off as a melody off the bassy trap clatter, the slightly compressed vocals, and especially the lyrics, where they're trying to work the whole ice cream is sexy metaphor long past the point where it stops making sense. I mean, the I'm sweet for you, put me in a cone line, that's bad enough. But what really grabbed my attention was Selena Gomez saying, catch me in the fridge where the ice be. I mean, between this and burning toast in the toaster, does she have a thing for common kitchen appliances or something that we're all not aware of? You know, I would say this reminds me of Rihanna's birthday cake in terms of clattering annoyance and an overexposed sexual metaphor. And I honestly think I just got what the cone line is and oh, God, it has to do with dogs, doesn't it? But I think Milkshake by Khalees and produced by the Neptunes is probably closer as a comparison, both in quality and artists who should know better than deliver crap. Tanita screams of writers getting stuck on one idea and not scrapping it instantly before it got out of control, which let's be honest, was midway through the first verse. So yeah, this is bad, but it's also only getting the dishonorable mention because internet money decided to get trippy red in the late Juice World on Blast Off here for a song that might just be worse across the board, or certainly less listenable. I mean, Blackpink, I can see spinning around to being so bad it's hilarious for the right audience. Not so much with Blast Off, which is just more boringly bad in a lot of conventional ways. Now, the best of the week, they're both going to country songs. Surprise. But you know what is actually close? I'm given Starting Over by Chris Stapleton the slight edge over Ain't Always the Cowboy by John Party, pretty much on vocal talent alone, even if they are both great songs. Now, of course, how much any of this will matter after album bombs likely coming next week, we will have to see. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.